We're just days away from the union budget and every industry is hoping that the finance minister would look into their demands, which the respective industry lobbies have already presented to the government. Today on the Realty Debate, we'll thrash out what's important for this industry. What does it want from the government on policy and taxes and how much of that is reasonable to ask for? Because remember, they'll ask for an arm, but they may just get a little bit of a finger or even less than that. Let me introduce my panel today. Anshuman Magazine, Chairman and Managing Director of CB Richard Ellis is with me here in the Delhi studio. Pankaj Bajaj, President NCR of Credai and also Managing uh, Director of Eldeco Infrastructure and Properties Limited. Samir Jasuja, Founder and CEO of Prop Equity. And Avinash Narvekar joins me from Mumbai. He's Partner Tax and Regulatory Advisory Services for Infrastructure and real estate, Ernst and Young. Gentlemen, thanks very, very much for joining me here. So we will, of course, look at the budget demands and move beyond that because there's a lot to talk about when it comes to real estate uh, in the country. But let's just start off this discussion with the biggest demand that the industry has and has had this for a long time, which has declared housing as an infrastructure, give it that infrastructure status. I'm going to come to you, Pankaj, first. What does it really do? I mean, for a common viewer, I know a couple of industries, it's not just real estate, but there's logistics, there's hotels. All these industries have been lobbying to get the infrastructure status. Uh, first are the, uh, the direct results of being classified as infrastructure. Uh, the first thing is you will get um, uh, income tax exemption on your profits under section ATIA of income tax. And that hopefully would translate into uh, lower prices for the end customer and greater uptake and everybody uh, 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 benefits. The second is uh, access to cheaper sources of funding and that is a very big issue for the industry right now. All sources of funding have been, all taps have been closed at the moment, whether it is equity, the uh, primary equity markets are in the dumps, uh, the secondary markets for real estate at least are not doing well, private equity sources are also, uh, they are very difficult to access, external commercial borrowing is not allowed in real estate, RBI frowns upon banks lending to real estate developers for the moment. Right. So if we get infrastructure status, uh, banks do uh, uh, earmark certain funds every year to be uh, lent to the inf infrastructure uh, sector at lower rates of interest. That is going to translate to uh, cheaper and greater access to funding for developers and hopefully translate to better supply and lower cost to the end customer once again. So it's an important demand, Anshuman. I mean, it's, but it's not something that can come in so easily because it also means that the banks then have to lend to another sector prioritize that and you mark more funds for that sector. Is it valid that uh, just because the source of funding seems to be drying up and there could be various reasons for the source of funding to, to dry up, that real estate sector gets the infrastructure status? See, uh, it is valid, but it's not the real estate sector. This is only uh, primarily, I think, the demand is for residential townships uh, projects. Uh, because we do need to increase the supply of residential uh, real estate. In fact, all real estate, but let's say residential because everybody talks about affordable housing. And if that gets infrastructure status, certainly they can uh, get then access to cheaper funds, uh, which, is the, which is the main demand. And I think it's a valid demand uh, because people all talk about real estate getting. I mean, real estate is a very large, uh, you know, uh, a group of different segments. I know, 100 but, ancillary industries so, attached to real estate as well. So this is really a, a township. Which, uh, which is, which is uh, the demand is for the infrastructure status for that. Avinash Navrekar, you come in here and tell us, I mean, the status, uh, you must be dealing with not just the real estate sector, but uh, from Ernst & Young, logistics, uh, hotels, just everybody demanding this infrastructure status in the country. How valid is it for the government to actually look at some of these demands and just, you know, from what Anshuman has said, at least for affordable housing point of view or to enlarge that supply, give housing and infrastructure status? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been a long-standing demand of, uh, of the industry, various industries actually. Like you said, within real estate, there are several, several sub-segments as well. Um, I think it's very unlikely that the whole sector will get industry status. Uh, you know, that, that demand has been made several times in the past by the industry forums as well. Um, you know, it, it's obviously about, uh, you know, having more liquidity, providing more liquidity to the sector. So if you provide industry status, the risk weightage with the bank supply goes down, the interest rates go, goes down, more availability of funds. The RBI has always been hawkish about, uh, you know, an asset bubble being created. They come out with several measures in the past. I think somewhere some of those have helped, uh, you know, so there's no lending for buying land, for example. 
So that's the thing we're going to stay, I suspect, uh, you know, over the medium term. But at least for the other bits, the construction financing, loans to even the home buyers in that sense, I think that's certainly a case, uh, especially in the affordable segment, to to look at it. Whether the RBI looks at it, I guess that's that's a big question. They haven't they haven't uh, you know considered it favorably in the past. But I think uh, you know a valid uh, valid demand to make. Mm. So, Meer, an interesting point that Pankaj made was that, that the cost of housing could go down because they, developers will have to pay a little bit less on income tax. They will have cheaper source of funding and therefore the cost of homes themselves will go, go down. But you and I have been doing this show now for three weeks and we figured out that cost of homes never go down. I mean, yeah, it's, I... It, this is not something that developers will be very willing to part with to the customer. Maybe on the supply side, as Anshuman said, things could ease up and that's what Pankaj also said. But in terms of costs for the end user coming down, will it have any impact at all? If at all it comes, it's, it's the biggest demand but the most far out demand. See, I think the government should come out with an innovative mechanism. I don't think just by giving interest subsidies or, you know, or doing something else, costs are going to come down. I think either they have to come out with a mechanism that the developer, when he launches a project, he can only take the pricing up by 20% or 30%. Why does pricing go up by 100%, you know, when, when markets start to do well? So according to me, just giving it an industry status by, by giving it uh, a lesser interest or by doing other stuff is just not the only solution. You have to look at other innovative steps.